Hello and welcome to Revise's first mini series of interactive forms. We're going to be doing our app tutorials. Thanks so much for joining us today. So some brief housekeeping before we get started. It's the same as always, but there'll be a recorded version of the webinar on the Revise site after. So if you miss any information or you can't make it today, that's fine. We have educational resources on our site after. Next is the Q&A. This is a really engaging part of the webinar that we'll have after the presentation. So I ask kindly that you hold all questions, uh, unless they're tech related, of course, until the end. Uh, it can be kind of distracting for the speakers. And lastly, the best way to keep up with us is to follow us on social media. And I'll have our QR code at the end where you can keep up with us on our various platforms. And a little bit about us before we get started. Revise has been in the business for over 20 years, and we have an experienced and diverse team of employees. We specialize in creating beautiful, accessible, and responsive government websites. And although we're headquartered in Troy, Michigan, that doesn't stop us. We serve government agencies all across the US. And your host today, I have the pleasure of joining with me, Senior Account Manager Dylan Johnson and CTO Derek Ortiz. Derek's more so going to be part of the Q&A since he has some tech background. And obviously, it's me, the same person as always, Danny Esterline, Marketing Specialist. Uh, now I'm going to go over a little bit about Revise Forms app key features. So government websites are niche industries, of course, but certain app integrations are useful, especially when we're talking about resident engagement. So interactive forms app are helpful because it reduces need for print and mail forms. It allows residents to submit various applications like water stop and start service. And the submitted forms are routed to the respective departments after a resident were to submit their form. You can see on this example on the slideshow, we have uh, the city of Arcadia water and sewer service start form. So that's an, uh, an example, but we'll go into it more in depth of actually how to use it and how you would make a form as a government agency as well. Along with that, once a resident or a person submits a form, there's full tracking and status updates available for gov the government agency. So it's really great for organizational purposes for municipalities. And there's no limit on how many forms the user can create. So you could create as many forms as your heart desires. And now I'm going to pass it off to Dylan, who's going to give you an excellent tutorial on how to do the revised forms app. I was muted for a second. Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing well today, and thanks for taking a little bit of time to uh, check out the Forms app. Um, what I'm going to show you today is, first of all, how you can organize and create a custom form that you can, of course, post online. Then I'm going to dive in real quick and show you how some of our customers are utilizing that on their websites. And finally, I'm going to show you how uh, our customers are able to go in uh, add comments, and track some of the forms, create reports. So uh, the form building app is very easy to use, and if you're used to uh, the revised CMS, um, it should take almost any time to really pick up very quickly. Once you sign in to the form app, uh, you'll have um, various calls to action. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is our department's feature. What this enables you to do is set policies, holidays, even create canned emails for each and every department so that you can assure when a form is submitted, it goes to the correct department, the citizen gets a response via email, and if needed, you can escalate any kind of form depending on how people respond or if there are holidays. So as you can see, uh, once a form is submitted, if Thomas doesn't respond to it within an hour, it'll push to Judy. And if she doesn't respond to it in two hours, it will push to Alex, and so forth and so on. And of course, this can be adjusted and built depending on what makes the most sense to you. Uh, as you can see, you can add holidays and 
and emails. Uh, these are great for a couple of reasons. One is that you can submit that email and once somebody puts in a form, they'll automatically get a response and know they submitted the form. Uh, secondly, uh, you can use these almost to create some automatic responses as a form uh, moves through any kind of processing from department to department. So uh, I'm going to quickly show you how our customers are able to build their forms, and then I'll jump out and show you some of those forms live. Uh, I'm going to go into uh, this form, a building department. Um, all you need to do is hit create a form, name it, and then you can begin to build. So uh, as you can see, I've put in a title. Uh, this is where a lot of our customers are able to go in, put in their logo. Uh, some of them will be able to put in um, some of their terms and conditions. You, you find that a lot when you've got uh, in employment forms. Uh, other of our customers will put the terms in before you even get to the form, so you can click and I agree. And once you start building the form, it's just a matter of dragging and dropping. So if I want to make sure a citizen gets their phone and their email, I'll just build this row right here. I want to make sure, of course, that they're going to put in their first name, last name, things like that. I'll just drag these in as well. This is an open text field. There's an open text area and so on and so forth. So I can create row upon row. Um, I can add radio buttons. These are really cool because I can, of course, add more and more options. And one of the favorite features with the forms is the required button. So I can't as a citizen submit the form unless I fill out every field required. Now, this saves a whole lot of pain when, uh, you know, I talk to customers all the time that somebody forgets page two of the PDF or they didn't turn it around. They send it in, they think uh, they submitted a permit or a job application when really there's much more that they need to provide. And as you can see, you can attach a file if you want to. So they can upload uh, floor plans, resumes, anything like that. And really all you need to do is just drag and drop until you have a form that makes sense. Then you can preview and see how it looks when your citizens will actually be visiting the form embedded or linked to your web page. Go right back to editing. Uh, the other neat thing about this forms feature is that I'm just going to leave here and not save everything is that you can copy a particular form. So I have customers that are doing applications for employment, but they might need to tweak it a little bit for their police department or their fire department. So all they need to do is copy, rename and rebuild the form. So I'm going to jump out of the Forms app really quickly and show you just how a couple of our customers are utilizing the Forms, and then I'll go back in and share some reporting. Now, this is Arcadia, California. Um, I'll show you another little feature that's super cool too. This is our curated search feature. Um, and I'm going to go to the services page. And I'm going to look up starting or stopping water and sewer services. So as you can see, everything is embedded in the body of the website. And when I fill this out on the back end, I will receive an actual form that I can print, that I can save, that I can add information to. A couple of the great things about having your forms built into the website like this is a lot of citizens these days don't have a scanner and printer and they can't take a PDF and a lot of your citizens are actually coming to the website on their phone or a mobile device so uh, they might not even be able to print out a PDF or, or save a PDF that's fillable. With this any device from a laptop to a mobile you can fill out all of these fields and submit them. 
as you can see, all of these are a little bit different, but you can also tell with some of these forms, they were copied and then re-embedded. Uh, here's one of our customers that is utilizing the forms for employment. So this is their police department. So you see, you can put in all of that information onto the form itself, some of the EEOC things, and then, hey, here's where you can click the required documents, so I know I'm going to be submitting these, and here is that employment form. As you can see, you can add a lot of fields, you can create a, a lot with these forms. Right here is another example of an employment form, and as you can also see, that's especially important for uh, some of these folks who are uh, doing seasonal stuff that people can fill out everything on their phones, especially when you get some younger workers. So it's easily filled, it's easily created, and it's easily submitted. Uh, here's one more example. Uh, this is for a uh, PAC or a land use permit. Um, and as you can see, in this case, you've got your policies and procedures right ahead of time. And then when I go to the portal, I hit the agreement. And once again, I'm accessing the form. So once a citizen submits this form, that's when you or whichever department head is going to be notified of the forms goes back to the app and is able to use our reports feature for all kinds of different things. And this is once again a great way to manage your forms and actually track a form from the moment it's submitted, the moment uh, perhaps your system gets approval, or the moment someone's hired, or anything in between. So as you can see, you've got reports for all of these forms that are submitted. When I go look at a specific form, I can filter that form. I can start, the end, when it was created, its status, priority, and of course I'll be able to see when it was submitted, when it was updated, and then I'll be able to also look at the form itself. So as you can see, this is a form with all of those fields filled. And if I need to, uh, perhaps I want to forward this to somebody in another department. It happens a lot with HR. So um, I'm going to send over a, a question or a, a filled out application to somebody in another department. I just drop that down, find the person in that department and say, for your review, I will have a history of that. and it will go automatically to, I believe I just submitted it to Derek. Um, also, you can respond back to the citizen on these forms. So you can make the post public and you can say, citizen, the dog nation is over a year old. And then I can send that back by hitting post public to the citizen that submitted the form. And notice, as I do all of that, that information is being tracked. Um, if I want to print the form, very simple. I can print it. I can save it as a PDF. And if I need to create reports, if I want to see what's going on with um, a bunch of forms, you know, this happens when you have people uh, doing things like uh, having kids sign up for youth basketball or something through this, I can grab a report for all the submissions and export it via CSV. So as Danny said, um, there's really no limit to the number of forms you can have in this app, and there's no limit to the number of uses that you can have for these forms. You can set up multiple departments, and in those departments, you can set up multiple forms. So I'm going to hand it back to Danny, 
and we'll go from there. Thanks, Dylan. Well said. I'm going to go ahead and switch over the screen back to the presentation. And I saw we had some a few questions that popped up during Dylan's tutorial. So we'll answer them on a first come first serve basis. But I just wanted to make it known that our QR code with all of our social medias, our website, how to get in contact with us is with this QR code. So if you want to learn more uh, after this webinar, please scan that. <clears throat> and so I'm going to read the questions and then I'll let Dylan or Derek answer them depending on the, the matter. So Heidi um, asks, is the forms app a separate cost and how much? I'll answer that. Yes, yes it is. Um, it is a separate cost. Um, usually, and I'm going to, uh, every form is a little bit different, but you're usually looking at around uh, at least a couple of thousand for the setup and training. And then there might be a, um, depending on if we're going to be developing some forms or uh, if you're just going to have access to support, you see anywhere from um, a thousand bucks extra to the annual fee to, to a little bit more. So um, that's generally where you are. Uh, some of our customers um, kind of sign up for a package and they have revised, build a bunch of forms. And so uh, that would depend on the size of the forms, the length of the forms, things like that. Thanks, Dylan. So yeah, he we also illustrated the importance, the benefits of if you were to choose that feature. Okay, um, Jason Weeks, did we answer your question? Is there a backend export feature um, when we showed you that Excel file? So uh, I think after this question was asked, Dylan typed showed how we make reports of the data. So it's not just meaningless white noise, there's actual things that we can take from the submitted forms by residents to use by the employees of the government agency. Yeah, yeah. so uh, just that, that um, the uh, report screen that you have there and those filters, those all translate to an option that lets you export what you're seeing there in those filters as an Excel report that has kind of like all those fields built out. Um, and because you can kind of change your forms uh, as you go, they can kind of also during that be separated out into kind of individual sheets, depending on like the version that you're actually exporting. Um, but but yeah, that'll be it, it'll, it will export to an Excel file. Thanks, Derek. Um, Jeffrey Tucker asks, does this app include included with our regular site or is it ex extra if included where and how do we access it so we covered that it was extra if dylan why don't you let them know what the next step would be if they were to be interested in this feature give me a call or give us a call and uh, talk to your uh, account manager or myself and, and we'll um not only um sort of talk about getting that added to your website, but we can also kick around some options, maybe having revised both forms, things like that. Okay, uh, Michelle King asks, we are having some complaints about the font size. Is there a way to make the font larger? So uh, I'll go ahead and answer that. There isn't uh, actually an option to tweak the font size in the form interface itself, but if you post uh, a ticket in the support portal, we should be able to go ahead and update your configuration to adjust the font to whatever seems right for your, you and your users. So, yeah. Heidi asks, how is staff notified that a new form has been submitted by email or only in the system? Um, so it is both. Uh, they get an email notification. Um, you're kind of in control of the types of response and information that you get in that notification. Um, but yeah, essentially, there's going to be a few uh, kind of crucial trigger points that in each forms flow that is kind of an event that you can tie a specific email to. Um, so you can kind of curate the type of information that your users actually get when that uh, 
that form is actually received or uh, updated on your kind of internal side as well. Um, and yeah, they'll also be able to see all those uh, forms for themselves inside their actual report screen as well. So. Thanks, Derek. Um, George Anna asks, are there sample CAN forms available that can be altered as needed? Uh, I don't believe it comes with any actual templates, um, but if there's certain things that you're particularly interested in, you can always ask about getting uh, forms uh, kind of set up initially in a way that you can kind of just copy from. Um, if you have specific things kind of in mind, we can definitely go ahead and do that. And I believe oh, Dylan showed that you can replicate one that you've already done. So let's say you want to make a sample one. It's not like you have to recreate it every time, if that helps. Or, or you could say when you set up forms, hey, revise, um, maybe I have, you know, two or, or three forms that are really important that I can use as a basis for some of my other forms. We could help develop those for you even um through the training portion for a little bit more and then we could get you could take those and and clone them and embed them and, and tweak them as needed so lots of different ways to approach that just depending on what your goals are shara asks are you emailed a notification that a new form has been submitted i think we covered that it was Uh, when we print our submissions, there is only the original citizen's entry. None of the tracking updates print out. How do we change this? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's another thing that kind of tends to vary a lot, um, depending on whatever your, your use case is. Some people really need that tracking information. Some people really don't want it at all and just specifically just want the printed form for their records, and that's about it. Um, so, so that is one thing that we can also change on our configuration side. So just, again, um, if you put in a ticket, basically just requesting to see if you can get those uh, track, tracking updates in your print view, um, we can actually uh, make that change for you. Thanks. Rhonda asks if images can be added to the forms. Uh, there is an option to be able to put some images in there. It's not um, like a hugely uh, customizable image interface. It's you can put in things like logos, um, some basic screenshots, or um, something that can kind of like guide someone along. Um, but um, so so yeah, there is a way to get images in. Um, it's not going to be like photo gallery style images or anything, but but you can put them in there and see if that works for you. And Deborah asks, are the forms accessible for people with disabilities? Uh, we do uh, make sure that we're trying to uh, hit certain ADA requirements for the forms. Um, to a certain extent, that's in part our hands and in part um, how you build the form in the end as well. Um, so if that's going to be really a focus, um, every time you build the form, you should probably check that one individually just to kind of make sure that there's nothing um, that falls out of your particular requirement that you're aiming for. Um, I know certain clients have potentially wanted certain things updated in very specific ways that didn't quite meet up with the exact standards, but you know, um, kind of needed to be done to hit exactly what they were going for as well. So um, we can definitely take a look at that with you as well. So. Also, we have um, a webinar on our site and on demand on ADA compliance as a whole to give you some tips of maybe what you could do on your end to uh, apply to some best practice standards because it is there's a lots of different levels, but you know meeting those focal points are the best so that you know you're including everybody. And Caitlin Von Schmidt asks, the numbers of form that were on the list of forms, is that the total filled out or total completed? Um, I believe it's the number of forms that match uh, those. Actually, yeah, that'll be all, all the forms that have been submitted in that uh, kind of forms classification. 
Um, so of that form type, typically, I think that screen is. We answered Jason's question. Uh, Amanda asks, how long is the data saved? Uh, the data is saved until you delete it. Um, it's not temporary at all. So. Does Revise support forms that require a signature? If so, how does that work? Um, so we don't really have like an e-signature integration uh, that has like, you know, fake signing or anything, um, but there are a lot of ways to include a way to have like a certain acknowledgement, whether it's a checkbox, typing in your name or initials, um, and a lot of those can be treated kind of the same way. A lot of my customers add that language, or I agree before you start filling out the form or by typing this in, I'm going to, you know, say that everything therein is true, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah. Carol asks, is there additional cost for the amount of responses? For example, if we get about 4,000 applications in a 36 hour period once a year. I, I would leave uh, that I, to you, dear. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think that we actually cost for or put any pricing in on any any sort of actual submission quotas. It's pretty much just uh, whatever the actual monthly cost is, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Your annual fee covers most of that hosting, and and uh, it's a pretty scalable app. So I I don't think we we've, we've even touched upon any type of, of limits or concerns with that. Is, is that right there? Yeah, and I, I know we definitely have had uh, clients with rather large influxes and especially um, at the start of uh, COVID, um, there were a lot of forms regarding those signups and kind of acknowledgements that um, had some pretty large spikes in, in submission traffic, so. Okay. Um, so Denise asks, is there a way to use the service for internal requests between departments, example, for example, AP for AP? So if I'm understanding this right, like between other, the government agency, the people in, within the municipality, I think. Um, so I know you can create a form um, and as long as people all have accounts within that particular uh, client tree. Uh, essentially, you can send forms across departments if needed, uh, and, and that can kind of help those kinds of workflows. Um, um, don't think I'm really familiar enough entirely to fully answer this question, uh, just in an actual kind of business logic kind of fashion. Uh, but uh, if you wanted to I don't know, ask some further questions later on, then we could probably go a little bit more in depth and see if we can answer that a little bit better. <laughs> uh, so Georgiana asks, can I import an existing form and then update, change it? Um, so I don't think there's any way to kind of just import uh, a form, but you can, if you already have it in the system, kind of copy it and then update and change that copy. Um, Otherwise, if it's like a paper form that you have, you kind of just need to recreate it in the system itself. Yeah, you usually do have to do that. I have some customers that want to bring in their PDFs, but you have to think of it as a different creature versus an interactive fillable form. You know, it's not going to be exactly the same. So you do have to reinterpret it and, and recreate it in the form set. Thanks, guys. Uh, Rhonda asks, can we add logic? For example, if question A is answered as yes, respondent must also answer additional question B. Logic is currently not something we support. It is something on our own kind of roadmap and wish list for something that we do want to support in the future. But yeah, right now, um, just kind of basic forms, what you have there is what you can kind of work with, um, you know, sort of conditional, uh, question trees or anything. Um, so she also asked, are people able to electronically sign the forms they submit? Uh, I think we answered that. We don't have that currently right now in our forms, but that's definitely something you can integrate if you'd like. 
Okay. Um, Pat asks, is there a limit on how much data is stored for the forums? Um, yeah, I don't think we really have a data quota for, for that either. So um, that's just good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the difference between the online web form builder and the interactive forms app builder? Um, so I believe that's mostly in, in terms of yeah, how we describe the things. So um, one is kind of the, the form building option within the CMS itself. Uh, and so that's going to be for the forms that you're just building specifically on your website. Um, typically, I think that one just supports kind of like one column of, of fields at this point, And then those are pretty much just being emailed to you. Um, it, you don't have the data being saved or any sort of escalation flows or anything that this actually offers. It, it doesn't look like a form really when you get those those forms. It's it's more like in the body of a web, in the in the body of an email versus mm -hmm. an actual form that you can print, look at, refer to as a form. So uh, this person asks, is there a limitation on how many or how long the form can keep historical information? Um, I think if we're take, talking data, we answered that it, it's kept until you delete it. That's great. OK. Um, and this person asks, is the data encrypted such that social security numbers can be submitted through the form? Um, yeah, so the, the data is encrypted both in transit and at rest. Um, yeah, if you have, I guess, deeper questions about more technical requirements for that. Um, then you can always ask some of those as well. But um, there is yeah, encryption on the data that's actually submitted. Um, and then all those submissions, um, you can basically optionally have uh, go out to the, the public themselves to basically request temporary access to view their, um, their <laughs> actual submission itself. Um, and that requires kind of a, a back and forth email flow. So unless they actually have a valid email that they submitted with, then they're not actually going to be able to see their data. Um, and that additionally uh, follows with anyone who's basically stumbling upon uh, the actual submission links themselves, um, trying to potentially look for data as well. They'd have to basically go through that kind of authentication flow in order to actually see it on the public side. Um, so, uh, yeah, that information yeah, thanks. is whether or not that's <laughs> a, a good fit for, for your use. Uh, Deborah asks, can we get to the form submissions through an API? Uh, right now, we don't actually have API access to any of the, the form functionality. And Heidi asks, uh, can you set a retention destruction date? Mm. Not at this time. Uh, might be a good thing to, to add on to our future roadmap, though. And uh, one last question in the Q&A, and then we're going to answer a few in the chat. Uh, when you say public, do you mean that the form is available to everyone or only to the person who submitted it? So, so the actual uh, submission link that clients get are technically, um, sorry, uh, better way to phrase this. So when someone submits uh, an actual form, basically they get an email eventually that uh, has their actual link out to that form so they can see their data. Um, when they click on that, they initially don't have access to anything. Um, they then have to basically trigger a workflow that sends them a temporary access link. Uh, and they can then kind of use that uh, temporary access link to uh, then basically see their data for the rest of that session. Um, and what that actually enables the user to do is to go in and see that back and forth that uh, you can basically kind of initiate to have conversations with your, uh, or I guess whoever is submitting the form um, and you actually internally. Um, so um, yeah, so, so basically they're not totally public, but they do require a little bit of like a, um, an actual like authentication flow in order to see and, and respond back and forth, so. Okay, uh, we're gonna go into the chat now just for everybody's um, 
Oh, I think Judy just said they may be asking about the make post public checkbox. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that's essentially what that's going to be talking about is whenever you hit that make post public, basically um, your little like comment or whatever update that you're doing uh, will then trigger uh, an email that goes out to whoever basically submitted that form. Um, and then basically they can click on that link to then go ahead and start that uh, flow in order to see that comment that, that they did. Um, additionally, I think typically by default, uh, it has that little summary of your comment in the, the email as well. So they wouldn't necessarily have to go through that flow just to see your comment, but um, they kind of, they basically wanted to respond back or um, uh, probably click on an attachment, so. <laughs> okay, let's go into the chat now since there was some overlap. Um, so can I get a copy of this video? All webinars, um, as stated in the beginning, will be on demand on our site after. So anybody can access them and you can use them to your educational resource. Um, and then the second question is, are the conversations archived? Yeah, so uh, every update uh, and uh, kind of comments on or part of that conversation in that uh, report. Uh, all sticks around as long as that submission stays in the system. Um, so if you were to delete that submission, then that history will go with it. But otherwise, it's uh, it's still there. So if you ever needed to refer back to it, you can always go back and view. Great. And then Brenda asks, how can you add a connection for payment to the form? Um, at this point, we uh, do have support for certain kinds of payments. Um, so we don't really have like a recurring payments or online bill pay type flow um, where you kind of put in whatever your billing amount is, um, but we do kind of support being able to integrate uh, Stripe as uh, a payment uh, provider for the actual forms themselves. Um, and you can go ahead and basically uh, set kind of uh, certain pricings on things like checkboxes and radio buttons in order to create um, kind of um, almost like a little bit of a marketplace type deal or just kind of a flat fee for submitting the form. Um, and we've had some clients go ahead and use that kind of functionality for things like uh, per permit uh, options. And I think, I think that's probably the biggest thing. Um, <laughs> and and Eric, did, did you say that that's set up so that if someone does submit it, they'll go to the payment page and then you won't see the form until so they actually make the payment, is that, is oh, that right? Oh, yeah, that's correct. So, so yeah, uh, when you actually have those options um, specified and, and it is kind of treated as a payment form, basically when you hit submit, it'll yeah take you to a checkout page where you put in your information. And then once you've actually kind of uh, successfully paid for it, it will actually finish the, the rest of the submission workflow and then go off to um, your, your email triggers and everyone will get notified about it, so. <laughs> Awesome. And Tom asked, does a user need to log in to answer back and forth? Yes. Uh, user does need to log in in order to, to actually respond back. And we did cover that you can indeed add a logo to the form. Um, is there a limit to how many filled forms are stored? Uh, say pet licenses. I think we covered that there's not a limit. Am I correct, panel? Awesome. That's good. We covered the signature. We do not offer that, but we can't integrate it. We covered the payment. And John asks, what are the aesthetic options, color, backgrounds, graphics, photos, animations possible? Um, I don't know that we'd be able to do too much in the way of animations. Uh, so there's only really one general theme to everything. Uh, but if you really wanted, we could probably uh, add on some additional theming to change kind of how the fields look or colors or something like that in order to, to fit however you want it to be. Um, there is a bit of uh, customizability in, in how we go about doing that. So, um, so yeah, not really like a, a full, you can select a bunch of themes, but we can tweak the, the styling for your particular uses usage. Awesome, I think we answered all questions. That was a really engaging Q&A. So thank you all to those who have came. Um, again, our QR code is there if you wanna keep in touch.
But other than that, have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much.